Hey guys. I am really excited to show you this video. We all know that women have access to numerous birth control methods but there really isn't any for men, except using rubbers. This is about to change. Enjoy the video. Now, a contraceptive jab for men has proved to be 96% effective in a trial involving 350 men. But researchers say more work is needed to address the side effects of the treatment, which included depression, muscle pain and acne. I'm joined from our central London studio by senior consultant gynaecologist, Professor Geeta Nagant, and author Peter Lloyd. He's written the book, Stand By Your Manhood, a game changer for modern men. Peter Lloyd, to you first. Is this a game changer? It absolutely is. The male pill is going to be as political as it will be pharmaceutical. For a long time, men have been on the back foot when it came to contraceptive control, and this is going to finally level the playing fields. We're going to see men being able to decide when they become fathers rather than women deciding that matter for them. It's long overdue. I welcome it completely. What about the side effects, though? How much do you think those will put men off having this contraceptive injection? Because there were some 20 men who pulled out of the trial because they considered the side effects to be so bad. Peter Lloyd? Uh, well, I think that, you know, there are side effects to every medicine, so that's understandable. But, you know, th th these things are going to be in development for a long time, and obviously the side effects are going to be minimised, and the risk is going to be much smaller than the advantage, which is, you know, men have just as much riding on pregnancy in the long term as women do, but not nearly as much control. So this is absolutely important. I, I welcome it. It's great. Yeah, Professor Geeta Nagan, let's bring you in on this. Uh, as Peter Lloyd was saying, men have just as much responsibility over uh, pregnancy in, in the long term. But in the short term, it's the women who get pregnant, isn't it? So is it women's responsibility? No, I don't agree at all. I, contraception is a shared responsibility. Uh, and I think it's about time men took responsibility for that. And women have been taking the pill for decades. Um, and the side effects, that risks that go with it, visiting the GP, getting repeat prescriptions. It's, I, I welcome this. This is a very significant and welcome development. Do you think women will be willing to hand over this responsibility and trust men to be having the contraceptive injection or perhaps be taking the male contraceptive pill effectively? Yes, I think so. Look, we need further studies, as you mentioned earlier, to minimize side effects and make sure that it is safe and effective. So I hope further studies will continue. Uh, and um, it's an injection, and it's great that uh, a long-term hormonal injection um, studies have been done. And I think women will. And I think women would absolutely welcome men taking responsibility. And uh, I, I think it's really good news. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, Peter Lloyd, what your thoughts are on the effectiveness of this 96%. So there's still a 4% failure rate. Is that good enough for you? Do you know, I, I, I think it is. I think 96% is pretty good going at this stage in the game. And, and chances are that, 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 that those probability stats will, will increase even, even more over the next coming years. But, you know, go, going back to the last point, it's funny how, how we always have this debate of, would women trust men to take the contraceptive pill? I think it's ironic because that's exactly what men have been forced to do with women who say they're on the pill. Yeah, we've had a lot of responses on, on Twitter to this. I want to bring some of those in now. Here's Dr Mona Mansouri with her thoughts. As a GP, I welcome the news that there could be a new male concept available. I think it's a great idea and could be very, very useful for us in clinical practice. Uh, however, I would hasten to add that so far the side effect profile of this product has not been very good so that might put people off uh, using it or prescribing it uh, and i'd like to see some long-term safety data so i think we're a little way off but something to look forward to so that everybody can take responsibility yeah and let's have a listen to chris hawkins who also sent us his thoughts regarding this issue of the male birth control pill well it takes two to tango but both parties i feel are equally responsible but I would discuss it first. Professor Gita Nagand, I, I mean, I think our, our last uh, contributor there in tune with you saying it takes two to tango. It's about time that men uh, took responsibility for this. But I want to pick up on a point that Dr Mona Mansouri made about the side effects of this. There is still a long way to go, isn't there? Well, I think the studies are going in the right direction. The side effects so far have been, I think, mild to moderate mood disorders. 
and um, acne and all that. And, uh, and remember, 75% of men who participate in, in, participated in the study were willing to continue. So it shows that it isn't that bad. And all studies go through these phases where you minimize side effects and come up with um, dosages that are effective in minimizing side effects. And I think we'll get there. We should really welcome this, and we should not really uh, debate about whether women will trust or not. I think it is an issue about equality and taking responsibility for contraception mm -hmm. and creating families. And, you know, World Health Organization has a huge responsibility um, about um, pre uh, preventing unplanned pregnancies and birth control, and it's much needed. We have needed this for a very long time, and I s s very much welcome this. Yeah, uh, Pe it, Peter Lloyd, yeah, do you want to come in there? Well, I was going to say, I mean, you know, we've touched on the fact that there are some side effects for men, but the, the contraceptive pill for women, which has been a huge, phenomenal success and is probably the cornerstone of feminism in many ways, uh, also has side effects. And so what a wonderful opportunity for women who, if they perhaps have, you know, DVT or weight gain or loss of libido, which can simply be accompanied with the female pill, if they now have an opportunity to say to their partner, well, look, I'm suffering these side effects. Why don't you try the male pill and perhaps you'll fare better? And then we both win. I mean, what could be better than a world where all children are planned by both parents all the time? That sounds like a pretty good future to me. Yeah, I wonder if it sounds like an idealistic vision, though, Peter Lloyd. And, you know, many of your female friends will be, you know, welcoming what you're saying that, you know, women have put up with the side effects for years and now it's men's turn. But how many of your male friends do you think are prepared to deal with potential weight gain, with uh, mood issues, for example, acne, those kinds of things for this? Well, many men take drugs such as Roaccutane, which also have implications with side effects, you know, which also include weight gain and mood and depression. But, you know, it, it's about calculating your risk at the beginning and realising, you know, is the benefit going to be greater than the risk? And I think in this situation, when you're talking about creating a human life, which is going to change you, uh, you know, and the course of your life and your lineage and your finances for the rest of your life is crucially important. So, look, if it was my choice and I had to choose between putting on two stone and not having a child I didn't want it, great, I'd take it in a heartbeat. And all men should do the same. Uh, uh, Professor Nargon, I, I wonder what you make of the long-term implications of this. How much do we know about men recovering at their fertility once they come off these contraceptive injections? Well, so far, this study has shown good results. And I think around eight men in this study um, had the, where the sperm counts hadn't come back to normal. But that's a small number at this stage. And it does require long-term studies, as well as larger numbers, you know, more centers involved with larger numbers. And I'm, I'm convinced if these studies are continued, not only that we would achieve, achieve the efficacy, but also we will achieve the levels of hormones to be given um, in order to minimize side effects. So, it's, so far, it seems to be a success story. Yeah, but of course, it goes without saying this doesn't protect against STDs, does it? Well, it doesn't protect against STDs, but the, I think the campaign about STDs will continue, and I think we really need to look at the long-term contraception goals, shared responsibility, um, and a worldwide responsibility when it comes to birth control. And this particular development is aimed at achieving that, and we should continue our campaign about preventing sexually transmitted diseases. And I think they should go hand in hand. Let's also not forget that the female contraceptive pill has been no less of a success, even though that itself doesn't protect against STDs. So it's a bit of a red herring argument, really. We know it's important to protect against STDs. Of course it is. But human life, creating human life, especially if it's not planned and it's not wanted, that's the bigger benefit if you can avoid that. OK, Peter Lloyd, Professor Geeta Nagan, thank you both very much.